Well, hello again. So it just is incumbent on me as the current president to, I suppose, summarize the day's events, the year's events. Um, I think we've packed an awful lot in to our one day virtual convention. Uh, it certainly hadn't got the vigor that we normally associate with convention, but as I said earlier, you know, needs must. And so be it, that was as standing committee ordained and mandated. So I'll just summarize some of my own reflections on the year and on the day, and those obviously of others as well. We have gone through and are going through a crisis, a crisis in so many ways, but due to the current pandemic. But this crisis cannot be used as an opportunity to put into play and to allow educational uh, matters develop in a way that we would not have allowed, that we would not have been part of before this crisis. And so we must be ever vigilant on that because something that is ill-conceived before the crisis is still ill-conceived. Something that is grossly underfunded is actually even more underfunded now. The workload on teachers we have heard hugely. Now we have heard both quantitative and qualitative research to back this up. And that is very important going forward. Research to support our arguments will always help us to put our case. We need, as we go into the next school year, to be in a position to address the deficits in learning, which undoubtedly will have happened. And you'll notice I said deficits in learning. There most certainly were no deficits in teaching. You, as I said earlier, have done great work. But with this in mind, and we all are more aware than ever around the digital divide, we must be in a place to give our time and attention to the core of our work. And the core of our work is teaching our subject, our speciality. That is why we became teachers. And this is why we chose a particular subject or subject areas that we wanted to show the benefits of to our students. And we have spoken most stridently to the department on this. And the circular was referred to, and we will absolutely be vigilant in making sure that the initiatives are frozen and do not add to the burden of teachers. And that the inspection model, as in a supportive model, and a supportive model means that it addresses the needs as the teachers. So it is the teachers that would ask for the support in a particular way, not to be told by the inspectorate that they are going to support us in a particular way. It should be needs led and our needs, the classroom teachers needs, that would be that. You know, as somebody who comes from a science background, I've often felt this. This is a basic law of, of uh, physics. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only change its form. And that form has to be able to be given to the teaching, not to the form filling or the planning. It has to be given to the teaching. And that is so important now. It is always important, but it is even more important because we are dealing with the deficits and the deficits are greater for some students than others. And the inequity that these students feel and experience, we have to try our best with our limited, very limited resources to do what we can for them. I am also very aware that a significant number of our members are teachers. Uh, sorry, all our members are teachers, are managers. And they have had a horrendous year and they are facing into enormous workload. It is ahead of them. They will have had virtually no holidays. And having come from one year, moving into the next year, 
you know, this is really, really difficult what they are doing or trying to do. And I would ask that we support them, but I would also ask them that they would take a collaborative approach with their staff. Together stronger. We have always said that in the ASTI. And yet again, do not assume what the needs of the teachers will be. Ask them. Don't talk about us without us. Please, let it be needs-led. But inform yourself from the teachers what those needs are. There are particular needs that some of our more vulnerable members, our younger and newer members to the profession, and particularly our lesser paid teachers. So the issues around equality of pay, equal work for equal pay, it hasn't gone away, you know. And we will, as a union, be as strident in seeking this as we were when it came on the agenda so many years ago now. The pay talks, as we know, have to take place because the present pay agreement is about to run out on December 31st, so that it must be prioritized. But there are other important issues around that pay negotiations. And one of those is parity, uh, pay parity for pensions, pensions that they will be kept in line and connected to the salaries of practicing teachers. Do you know, it might not be your problem or your issue today, you're joining the profession. But please, Lord, may it be your, um, an issue for you in the future. It is very, very important. Because poverty in old age, no more than poverty at any age, is not pretty. And needs of the older community, we have seen actually in this crisis again, have a particular uh, resonance. And they are also vulnerable. So we do not want to have a cohort of people into the future, retirees, that because this link was lost, go into that cohort of people. In terms of the practicing teacher, and Maura addressed some of these, so I, but I do think that it is important to reiterate them. And some of these are that we need protocols around remote teaching and learning. You know, the digital era, it's wonderful. We're here today because of it. But it also has many, many pitfalls, and we cannot allow our profession to, to fall into those. The right to disconnect. We have seen that the survey was done mostly after 10 o'clock at night, and that's when our people then had a little bit of time for themselves. But you cannot have them being pursued by uh, management after the working hours and into their weekends. That time is their time. The efforts to undermine teacher autonomy, that the, we must give the teachers the trust that they deserve. We are an honorable profession. We are a learned profession, and we should be treated as such. While the return to work uh, safety issues have been dominating, for very obvious reasons, uh, a lot of the work of the union at this particular time, as I said, please do not think that the other items have gone off the agenda. They most certainly have not. We are very used to keeping many balls in the air at the one time. It's part of the work of a trade union. So. As I've said, the issues of pay, quality, pensions, et cetera, continue. One thing that we have learned from the crisis is the power of the collective. Now, as a trade union, we always knew about the power of the collective. We are, as I said earlier, as is on our posters and I think on our uh, membership form, actually, stronger together. We saw in the community how people pulled together to keep one another safe. People wear masks to protect others from what they may carry. That is very significant. It shows the importance of caring for others. And that is the work of a trade union, the collegiality. 
And that collegiality permeates all aspects of the trade union movement. And this comes to the issue then of membership. We will have an online membership at, by the end of August. And I'm told that it is uh, online and on time. So, and I thank the people for their work in that area. So this will facilitate us growing our membership because we have shown ourselves to be a union of integrity, hard work, fit for purpose, support our members individually and collectively. But it goes back to the school because new members join staff. So I actually put it to every member here and every member of our union that their work is to grow our membership. I remember when I joined the ASTI, I did so because I was approached by an ASTI member and it was the best thing I ever did. And it's what brought me here today. But it has seen me through some very difficult times. I too was a lesser pay teacher on a small contract. That's actually not as new as people may think. That was back in the 80s. So, you know, we must get our membership in our schools. That is where it is. And we must also see in our schools that the ASTI policy is implemented. It is fine for us to say it here at convention at CEC, at Standing Committee. But the most important place, the most important place that ASTI policy must be upheld is in the schools, because that's where you do your work. As I said, we are a trade union that has shown ourselves to be fit for purpose this year. We said yes, and we said no. And it's about knowing when to say yes and when to say no. We, through our efforts, allowed the Leaving Certificate class of 2020, a class which went through an enormous stressful time, no doubt about that, like no other. And Leaving Certificate, as we all know, is a difficult time at the best of times. But we, through our efforts and engagement, with the calculated grades allowed the cohort of students to progress with their lives, to move on, and that's important. We said yes, but we needed protection and we needed the protection of complete indemnity in doing that work, not to endanger the finances of our members. And when the indemnity the original indemnity was put before us, we said no. That is not sufficient to our needs. You must go and get full indemnity for our members. That is the only way that they will be protected and that is the only conditions that we will have our members engage in this work. It's not easy to say yes, and it's not easy to say no, but we did it, and we did it in a timely fashion. In short, we have gone through a year like no others. And in that work, we have worked hard, faced challenges, and allowed ourselves to show ourselves to our best. And somebody spoke earlier around the way we have been frequently portrayed in the media. And that is so. And it has been my job and Kieran, our General Secretary's job, to defend that position, our positions in the media. And I have to say, at the level of individuals, parents, even the general public that I have met, have actually come up to me and thanked me for the work of teachers at this time. We have heard so much about frontline workers, and absolutely, I thank them for their work. It has been amazing. But what we have seen, 
and what we will continue to see is that we are essential workers. And I think that a lot of people would never have seen that before. But we are essential. And we can see how essential in the immediate need of getting the economy back again, as uh, one of our speakers referred to earlier. But I, in my opening remarks, referred to the importance of education. And in that, how the future, the future of the economy, the future of our health, and being well and staying well, all of that comes from an educated cohort. So education is the basis of all. At the end of the week, that is next week, I will hand over the reins as president of the ASTI to Anne Piggott. And I wish to wish Anne the best of luck in this onerous task because I've no doubt that she will find it uh, onerous as well. It is, she is taking over, the, the crisis hasn't gone away, you know, and that I really do hope and say I will support in any way possible Anne's work uh, over the next while. Finally, I want to say thank you. Thank you to my branch, to my school. I work in a wonderful school, a wonderful school to work in. And why is it so wonderful to work in? because it's a very, very strong ASTI school. We see that the policies are implemented on the ground. There's a great sense of collegiality. And I have to say that extends to our management as well. So my school, they have always facilitated me in my work for the ASTI over the years, and I hope they will uh, in the coming year as well, to my branch who have been a very active branch, the Wexford Tony Boland, called after Tony Boland, Tony I worked with in the CBS in Wexford Town, another past president of the union. Someone actually who died, unfortunately, uh, far too young and still had a lot to give. But I suppose my most sincere thanks must go to my family. And I thank them most sincerely for their support because it has been needed this year. And most, most sincerely to my husband, Tom. He has been my rock and I thank him. And finally, I want to give the thanks to our team here, uh, AVC to Mark and the technical team. I want to thank the uh, delegates, CEC, Standing Committee, all for your cooperation and for your patience today when maybe things didn't work as we liked or as if you had trouble getting in or whatever. And last but not least, I want to thank head office staff for their work not only today, but throughout the year. It has facilitated my work as the ASTI president greatly, and I thank you for that. Thank you, delegates. We declare convention closed. Uh, it's customary. I, I see our immediate past president has joined us, and I, I know she wants to say a few words, and I'm sure she will choose them and pick them very well. Thank you, Kieran. Uh, thank you, thank you, President. Yes, as one of my last duties as uh, immediate past president, it is absolutely an honour to get a chance to uh, thank Deirdre. I want to thank her for her handling of today's convention. It was difficult. We're not, none of us are experts in technology, but you look like an expert today, Deirdre, and you handled it with great charm Deirdre. and with great efficiency, so I thank you for that. I'd also like to thank you for your inspiring and thought-provoking words as you addressed us there. Um, in your own usual style, you had plenty to say and you said it in a way that made us think and, and uh, had a lot of thought-provoking and challenging issues there for us all. Um, 
this has been a presidential term for you like no other. Um, Deirdre undertook our union issues, fighting for and defending the welfare and conditions of our members in her own inimitable style, and to use her own word, strident, is a very word, good word to describe Deirdre. Uh, dealing with all of this, she was then faced with a pandemic, COVID-19, and all that that involved for education. Will we or will we not have a junior cert? Uh, quickly followed by the huge controversy around the timing and subsequent cancellation of the leaving cert and all sorts of issues around reopening the schools. But as Deirdre said, um, the ASDI fought very hard to ensure the indemnity of its members, because that's what a union does. But Deirdre led that challenge and uh, she, they, the ASDI fought for that and got it for its members. So I'd need to say to you, Deirdre, it hasn't been an easy year for you, and we recognize that. This is not the kind of convention any of us would want. But I want to say a very, very big thank you. You have done the ASDI proud, and we are very, very grateful. Gora Mahogat. Go, ladies and gentlemen. With that, I hope that you will get some sunshine to enjoy the rest of your time before you take on the next challenge as teachers in the new dispensation of education in Ireland. Gormil Mahogat. Thank you. Remembered that too great, you know, that old um, learning by heart just let me down there for a minute, but uh, to formally close convention, declare it closed. Thank you. <laughs>